Hello beloved, I'm going to talk to you today about the miracle of salvation and I, I wanted to encourage you and to uplift you. Welcome to the very first Encouraging Overcomers of 2021. Why would I want to talk about the miracle of salvation? Because most of you, I'm sure, listening to this message have given your heart to the Lord. Um, but do you really know the value of what you've done? Do you know the value of what it means to know Jesus Christ? I mean, salvation is the, is the greatest miracle ever. The very greatest miracle. There is no miracle, in my humble opinion, which is a above it, uh, um, ahead of it, uh, surmounts it? Absolutely not. Because God himself, God himself became man, went to the cross, and he bore our transgressions, that's our sin, our iniquities, everything wrong with us. He bore that he went, he had nails in his hands, in his feet. He had thorns in his head, knives pierced through him. Oh, what an awful, nasty experience. He did all of that and conquered the depths of hell so that you and I can live, so that we may be forgiven in our brokenness that we may be accepted in our imperfection, that we, that we can be seen as beautiful, no matter how much we might feel differently ourselves, that he sees us for who he's called us to be. And because Jesus did that, and he continues now that he's in heaven to intercede for us, and he sent his Holy Spirit to live in us as our counsel, our Father God looks at us, through the blood of Jesus. Can you imagine what that means? And I cannot labor this enough because I think many of us, in fact, I see it and I'm, I'm guilty of that too. Many of us walk around and behave like we're not saved, that we don't know who Jesus is and maybe we don't really. Therefore, beloved, in 2021, starting now, I want you to, I want you to really take some time and, and meditate on that miracle of salvation, what it means for your life and how it should start to influence the way you think, the way you feel, your thoughts, your minds, your behavior, because that, that, that miracle means that you and I, we're going to live forever. That miracle means that no matter what happens in this world, we're just passing through. That miracle means that when we keep our eyes focused only on Jesus, when we keep our eyes focused only above to God, when we rise above the drama, when we take our eyes out of the weeds, out of things that are happening in the world, oh my goodness, we can be, we can be full of joy regardless of what is happening. So do you know, do you really know the value of the miracle of salvation, the fact that you are saved, that miracle? Do you know it? If you know it, how do you behave it? How do you think it? How do you feel it? There is no other way, no other way. And yet we've been chosen, you and I, so we have that only way. Acts 4.12 reminds us, it says here, nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven um, given among men by which we must be saved. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Hallelujah. There is no other name. And both you and me, we have that name. We have that name, beloved. I'm laboring this point because one of the things that Jesus never promised us was an easy life. 
We will have persecution. There will be suffering because he suffered. And if we're going to follow him, we have to go through some suffering. But thank the Lord Jesus. Thank God in heaven that we will never suffer the way he suffered. We will never suffer the way he suffered. But we know that there will be suffering. What the miracle of salvation guarantees us is that he will be with us every step of the way. And when we come out the other side, hallelujah, we are in the new Jerusalem. We are in the new Jerusalem. So we've got to take our eyes off what's going on in the world today and take our eyes off trying to chase things. So if you were asked to, to, to meet Jesus today, if if you were asked to invite him in and have coffee with you and have lunch with you, wouldn't you want to meet him? You would. The reality is he's with us. He's seen me now as I'm talking with you. He's, he's with you in the room, in the office, in the car, wherever you might be listening to this. He is with you. He is always with us. When we walk in that awareness, what would be different? How would we behave? Would we, would we show him that we are following his commands of love God with all our heart and love one another? What would that mean? How would we act? Because love is about action. It's not a feeling. If our feelings may propel the action, it may put more passion behind it. But love is action. It's action. How do we think? There might be times when we might feel very depressed or we might feel uh, a bit jealous. We might feel guilty. We might feel anxious about something. And yet his word tells us not to be anxious. We might worry, worry, worry. And yet his word tells us not to worry. If we were really holding on to that miracle of salvation, how much time do we spend wasting on things that are not to do with eternity. How many of us out there are so hungry for status, for money, for financial things, to be envied by our friends, to be applauded? For what? If we really hold on to this miracle of salvation, what would be different? What would be different? And Titus Titus in the Bible gives us some ideas. In fact, he gives us some very clear instruction. And I'm not saying this because it's easy. Absolutely not. In my talking with you, in my encouraging you, I'm encouraging myself too. Because beloved, now is the time to, to really press in and say less of me. Less of me, less of my thoughts, less of what I want, less of the world and more of you. Hold my thoughts captive. Instill in me a desire and a hunger to take your word out, to take you out, to preach the gospel like you called me to. Help me know who I am in you, Lord. Help me walk in the identity of who I am in you. Because I know you chose me and I have my identity in you. So Titus tells us this in Titus 2 verse 11 to 14. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously and godly in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works, zealous for good works. We should be eager to do what Jesus wants us to do. What do you want from your life in 2021? Who are you in 2021? How can you be the light of the world in 2021, knowing that you are the vessel of the Holy Spirit, knowing that God himself lives in you, knowing that God himself has chosen you, knowing that God himself died for you and rose again and conquered the world so that you can live eternally. Who are you? What are you going to do? How will you behave? 
How will you act? How will you think? And you know what? Sometimes, even in our brokenness, if we're feeling low, that's okay because Jesus loves you the way you are. Sometimes we strive. We strive so hard to be different. Now, you might say, you're there, you're contradicting yourself. No, I'm not. And I'll tell you why. There are times when we may wallow in our feelings of negativity and we know we're wallowing. That's the time to say, Lord, I know who I am in you. I know what you did. I'm going to fill myself with your word. I'm going to act. I'm going to think like a conqueror and I'm going to combat those feelings of wallowing. And then there might be times because maybe we've had a bad news. Yes, we may have lost someone. Uh, we may have been rejected for something, whatever it might be. We all are individual. Yes, there's time to be low. The Bible also tells us that we have seasons. There might be a time to grieve and, and feel low and allow yourself to feel low. And even in that moment, think, oh, I wasn't good enough for that job. I wasn't good enough for that situation. I wasn't good enough because of what he said or she said for a little while. And then you challenge yourself and say, but who does the Lord say I am? Because the Bible tells us it's about seasons. It doesn't mean forever. So when that season is over and the Holy Spirit will help you because you can turn to the Holy Spirit and say, help me, quicken me, give me a nudge in my, in my spirit. Give me a nudge inside of me when it's time to step out of this particular season and step into one that says, okay, enough now. I need to go on with what you've called me to do. I need to walk straight. I need to know and behave like I'm somebody who is a member of the royal priesthood. My identity is in Jesus Christ. My identity is in my Father God. My identity is led and guided and counseled by the Holy Spirit. Beloved, Welcome to 2021. Grasp the miracle of salvation. Grasp what it means for your life. Grasp what it means for your identity. Grasp that it means that you're in this world, you're not of it. Grasp that it means that you can love. Grasp that it means that you are forgiven. Grasp that it means that you can forgive as well. Grasp it. Hold on to it. And I pray that 2021 is a year that turns out to be one of breakthroughs for you. One of favor, of mercy, of grace, of full of God's love. That God our Father himself will, will, will pick people that he has chosen to, to be around you. People who will encourage you. People who will walk with you. People who will, who, whose, whose attitudes will lift you up. People who will be full of integrity. That, that you will prosper in everything you do, where you turn your hands, where, where you turn your sight to, that you turn to him, that, that the Lord fills you with joy regardless of every situation, that you'll wake up every morning and say, this is the day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice in it. Thank you, beloved. And as always, Drop me a line or send me a WhatsApp if you would like me to pray with you or stand with you in agreement on anything at all. Lots of love and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.